Hey, I'm ZSH Plays, and for the past two years, I've been lucky enough to be sent some of the finest zoos ever made. And today, we're going to look at 10 of my favorites. From some of the finest zoos ever made to some of the finest not zoos ever made, we've seen some incredible stuff on this channel. And today, we're going to take a look at the very best of them. Let's go. We're going to start with a beautiful modern zoo, the Arizona Adventure Park by Bacon Play. As soon as you get into this zoo, you can feel the warm, sunny vibes of Arizona. It is absolutely beautiful. It is full of incredible architecture like this and beautiful animals like this. Most of the zoos in this video are available on the workshop. I will link all the ones that are below. And this is one of them. You can go in and check this one out for yourself. My favorite part of it was this small mammal house, a mixture of modernist architecture, cute little desert animals, exactly the kind of thing that I like to see in Planet Zoo. Bacon Play is one of the most prolific creators out there. I don't even know how many zoos that guy has completed or how many zoos he's working on, but I think this one is my favorite. There's just something about the vibe that I absolutely love. It even has a monorail, so you can just sit back and enjoy the ride, and see the whole zoo without even having to bother to walk around, which is always nice. Next up is Forest Park Zoo by BZ. This is one of the most unique zoos I've ever toured. It is set in America in the 1990s and is full of slightly janky looking builds that you would see in a zoo of that time where there's not a huge amount of money, but there's a lot of ambition and a lot of ideas going around. My favorite feature of this zoo is that the path you see here is the only path in the zoo and it stops under the archway that you see ahead of you. There is no way for guests to access this zoo, but um, the player can and can walk around anywhere they like in order to keep the performance up and stop Beezy's crazy builds being affected by having to think about paths. This Binturong enclosure, for example, is really classic. The tiles at the background um, the shape of it, it's just beautiful. This monkey house is one of my favorites. It's been a big influence on my building style. I forget which zoo in real life this is based on, possibly the Forest Park Zoo or the Zoo in Forest Park, as I think it's called. I'm not 100% sure, but the way it's built into the landscape and then you get these old school 70s, 80s style ape habitats in here. Glad this is not what you tend to see in zoos these days, but it's amazing to be able to go and see things like this in Planet Zoo. It also contains one of my favorite crazy old school zoo builds based on a build at Stanley Park, this penguin habitat. Wow, I have never seen anything like this. I couldn't believe it was a real habitat until he showed me the reference pictures. But yeah, that is an absolutely insane habitat and the build quality is amazing. The way he uses the plaster pieces and all the separate bricks at the back absolutely beautiful. This is the first zoo I ever toured on my channel and it is still one of my favorites. From a classic 1990s zoo to a classic 1890s zoo, it's the Imperial Gardens by Drac. This is the zoo that actually inspired me to play Planet Zoo properly. It's exquisite. Every detail in here is absolutely amazing. When I first started playing Planet Zoo, I did probably what everyone does. You start putting down the in-game barriers, I wasn't happy with anything I built. It was all just habitats made out of red bricks or the glass panels. And then I think it was on the forums, I saw some screenshots of this zoo and realized that I'd got everything very wrong. And this was actually one of the most powerful building games ever made. And I still love this zoo to this day. It's pretty old now. I think Drac only had maybe the Arctic pack to work with, possibly the South America pack, I can't remember, but very little pieces to build with but everything in here is incredible. These trademark statues, the classic architecture, perfectly recreated, the way the habitats on the inside are lush. His ceilings alone are amazing. This tiger habitat is just absolute perfection. And his big statement buildings like this, with all the statue work and the fountains, are still some of the most impressive things that I've ever seen in Planet Zoo. And this was like three years ago. It's not just buildings, of course, his animal habitats are amazing as well. Check out this elephant house. Just the colors in here. The little baby elephant walking past the doorway there. It's just so perfect. There's just, there's just no other word for it, really. 
I thought I'd show you as well a close up of one of the ceilings on the domes on either side of the main building. We've all built circly things, right? But this takes it to another level. Okay, enough of the past. Let's check out a big modern zoo. This is Marebi Zoo, a collaboration between Planet Zoo Blogger and Frisbee. And it is a big modern Australian zoo full of huge themed areas. There's loads going on in here. We've got riverboat rides, all sorts of stuff. And everything's organized into these big, highly themed zones like you see in modern zoos. Lovely entrance here. One of the things that impressed me most about this zoo is the whole zoo feels like it's in Australia, even though it's got all these different zones like this river ride with Malayan tapir in the background there. We've got African areas. There's a North American area. But my favorite was this Indian area. We've got a massive habitat for Komodo dragons here, which is really nice. And then as you move through the area, it is so highly themed. It reminds me of Land of the Lions at London Zoo. Uh, we've got all these Indian buildings that you can see here. Great work with colors and foliage. And it's almost like a little village that you walk through to get to the Garial habitat, which they uh, sort of foreshadow there with that little poster. And as you walk around, eventually you come out onto this big um, overlook and in the water in front of you, you've got the Garial habitat and it's full of things like this, really impressive entrances to get you into the mood for the various areas that you're visiting. Next up, we have one of the most unique things I've ever seen in Planet Zoo, the Lost Gardens by Haribo. This recreation of a park with a ruined castle and a forest next to it is just perfection all the way through. It's absolutely insane. This is another one on the workshop that you can wander around yourself and I can't recommend it highly enough. When I toured this zoo, it reminded me of playing like a triple A video game set in medieval times. I don't know how he does it with the pieces in Planet Zoo. You just cannot see the joins anywhere. Every part of this castle and even the, the forest and the park as well is just absolutely perfect. It is crazy how he puts it together. Um, I think I sent him about 50 messages <laughs> when I was touring this, mainly variations on the word wow. But if we go over this little bridge here, we'll take a close up look at this waterfall. And this is where I really started to feel like I wasn't even in Planet Zoo anymore. It's just wizardry what he does with the pieces in the game to make things like this. Let's go inside and check out the rest of the castle or the remains of the castle. Through here, again, the details on the floor, the steps, the way he's made those, everything about it, even the foliage on the walls. Just check out these little bits here. Wow, I think that's the uh, periwinkle grass sunk in there. This person is enjoying the view and who can blame them? It's just magical. One of my favorite things I've ever seen in uh, Planet Zoo. And I think this was number one on the workshop for quite a while. So I think the general consensus was the same. Outside the grounds as well, you've got little places like this peacock statue with the deer running wild or seemingly wild in the background. There's gardens everywhere. There's an entire formal park, which is absolutely amazing which I'm not even going to show you in this compilation because I'm trying to keep it to a reasonable length. The full length version of it, every one of these zoo tours is available on my channel if you want to go and check them out. And yeah, just more perfection from Haribo, one of Planet Zoo's best builders. Now I'm aware this wasn't actually a zoo, so let's go and check out one of the most realistic zoo builds I've ever seen. Wild Americas by Mr. Weasel is still one of the most popular zoo tours on the channel and I can completely see why. This is one of the best representations of a realistic small zoo that I have ever seen. It is based, I presume, on some of the zoos that we have here in England. I know Mr. Weasel has traveled the world looking at zoos, but that's the vibe I get from this, one of the smaller British zoos. Although I get comments from people all over the world saying how realistic it is. So I'm guessing small zoos have that similar vibe all over the world, but just things like this book display in the shop. I mean, I'd never even think to use the billboards like that. It is so clever. I remember being blown away the first time I saw the zoo by this PVC strip door before they were introduced into the game itself. 
and little things like this Amazonian giant water lily getting its own label, something I stole for San Bernardino Zoo. Thanks, Mr. Weasel. And then we've got this little habitat here for Cayman, and his use of the exhibits is absolutely perfect. Some of the most realistic uses of these exhibit boxes, he really makes them feel like they belong. Things like this tiny little habitat for tortoises. Again, I almost got jealous of somebody building in sandbox mode when I saw that, because you could never ever do that in franchise mode. We've got this gorgeous little capybara habitat here. Everything feels just so real, and that is quite hard to do in Planet Zoo, considering the size of some of the pieces, and the more sort of over the top theming that the game gives you, trying to make just a quiet little zoo like this, mainly made of wood and stone. It is just such a little mini masterpiece. I'm a huge fan of it, fully deserving of all the views it's got. Let's move on to a zoo that's very close to my heart. I've been following it from day one. Rose Lake Zoo by my good friend JP. This is one of the most ambitious projects I've seen in Planet Zoo. What you're looking at here is Rose Lake Zoo 1940, a huge zoo set, as the name would suggest, in 1940. Look at that gorgeous city in the background. The zoo is complete. It is absolutely magnificent. And as we speak, JP is currently working on Rose Lake Zoo 2023, a reimagining of the zoo for the modern day thinking about what would the zoo look like now. Some of the classic buildings are still there with new habitats in them. Some of them have been removed completely and replaced by cutting edge habitats. I cannot wait for him to finish that and you can bet that we'll be doing a full tour of that zoo when he's finished. This reptile house is absolutely gorgeous. From this light and airy first floor down to the basement where we get some spookier habitats like this one for alligators. We've got things like a incredible birdhouse. Check this out. Amazing building with all the tile work on it. And inside this long sort of artificial lake with some little prop ducks and things in there. Or I think they're mods actually. This is the only time I've ever installed mods for Planet Zoo just so I could tour this zoo. And this small mammal house is absolutely amazing. This was my favorite part of the zoo. It looks incredible on the outside and there's some amazing stuff in here as well. Tiny little habitats like they would have had back then for animals like the Hyrax, beavers and things like that. But the centerpiece of the zoo is one of the best builds I've ever seen. This elephant and rhino house. Look at the concrete and the stone on that building there. I absolutely love this. This is one of my favorite things I've ever seen in Planet Zoo. I'm very much looking forward to seeing a modernized version of this. The inside is just as good as the outside. Brings to mind the Casson Pavilion at London Zoo for me. There's a huge bear display as well, loads of different species of bear with this incredible rock work. Just an amazing zoo and cannot wait to see the new version. And now onto something much more modern. It's the Living Wetlands Centre by Thrive. This small but perfectly formed mini zoo is all about the detail. It's just a beautiful little building for aquatic and semi-aquatic animals set in the middle of this wetland area that you can see here. It actually reminds me a little of the Wild America Zoo that we saw earlier because there might not be a huge amount to see here but everything that you can see is absolutely perfect. Look at how realistic this little lake is, the brown water and the reeds and the building itself is really really nice with the glass and the different coloured brickwork. Once you get inside there's a handful of habitats here like this gorgeous little platypus habitat. I love the trunk growing across the top there. It's a really realistic size for a platypus probably a little deeper than you'd like, but you need it to be deep enough for them to swim. And we've got loads of other animals in here as well, like this little dude. And then the centerpiece of the building is this much, much larger habitat for crocodilians. It feels so much like you're in a real zoo and that is always so impressive. Now, what would happen if two of the amazing creators that we've already seen decided to combine forces and build something together? Let's find out. Welcome to Aquarium La Belle Mare. Another incredible build from the mind of Drac, but this time he brought Haribo with him. We'll take a look at what Haribo built in a second, but first, let's check out the fanciest flamingo habitat you've ever seen. This is absolutely incredible. This is the outside of the aquarium. They've even got nests, and when you move into the aquarium, it gets even more impressive. This roof, which is absolutely insane, is Haribo's contribution to this build. I'd love to tell you how he did this, but according to Drac, if you click on the roof, it will instantly crash your game. So I didn't. So no idea how he did it, although I suspect if I clicked on it myself, I still wouldn't be able to work it out. And in the rest of the aquarium, there is more amazing stuff. This jellyfish, 
some more of um, the skeletons that Drac likes to put in his zoos. And in the background there, an orca. Drac makes so many incredible things like this out of pieces. It is just so cool. The next room is the palm room. And this has got to be one of the best uses of billboards I've ever seen in the game to make the ceiling and the walls. It is so immersive, it really feels like you're in a ancient, well not ancient, but sort of Victorian uh, palm room with all the old paintings on the ceiling and these giant pillars, it's incredible. The last thing we'll take a look at is the bar. Obviously the aquarium's got a gentleman's bar in it with these peacock designs on the wall and the piano and the double bass. Even these armchairs here are absolutely incredible. I've got no idea how we made those. Just another slice of uh, pure class from Drac here. Now it's time for the final tour in this video. I've said it before, it is still one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Salon's Adventure Zoo by PS Vision Gaming. He has been building this for the past three years and he hasn't even started the zoo yet which blows my mind, but when you see the level of detail, you will see why. He has spent that time building this. The greatest setting for a zoo you will ever see. A whole strip of city where the zoo is going to sit. All the roads, shops, hotels, parks, skate parks, greenhouses, petrol stations, everything you could think of is here. And the build quality and the detail is absolute perfection throughout. There's not a single pixel of this build that isn't perfect. Believe me, I have taught it twice now and it is just absolutely amazing. This is the latest version you're looking at, which has this big green area added to it with the lake, that war memorial there, and then this greenhouse and garden area and the first animals on the map. We've got a little sort of petting zoo. Uh, there's a little dog exercise area there, but yeah, there's a petting zoo which you can see here with llamas and peafowl in it. And then out the window we go back to the big hotel, which is the centerpiece of the build. Those are my favourite 10 zoos that I've toured on our channel so far. If you want to see any of them in much, much more detail, then there is a link to the playlist on the screen now. Thanks for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you again soon for some more Planet Zoo.